our campaign manager for Donald Trump, Corey Lewandowski, of course, preceded Paul Manafort as campaign manager, and it was in charge when Manafort was first brought on. Mr. Lewandowski, welcome back to the show, sir. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, I think the last time you were on, it was in July, and you had said you'd given me a, a similar statement, but you were more inclusive uh, in a statement you made to GW, and I'm going to read it to you and ask you if it still applies. I think if anybody, and I've said this, if Paul Manafort, Roger Stone, or Rick Gates, or Carter Page, or anybody else attempted to influence the outcome of the U.S. election through any means that's inappropriate through collusion, coordination, or cooperation, I hope they go to jail for the rest of their lives. After uh, everything that happened Monday and everything we've learned about Paul Manafort, Rick Gates, that statement still hold for you? Oh, it still holds for me, Chuck, and these are because I'm, a, I'm an American who believes in our American electoral process and doesn't believe that uh, that is, I believe that that is more sacred than almost anything next to our family and God. I mean, we have to make sure that the American electoral process is san sanctuous and sanctimony so that mm -hmm. nobody interferes with that. And if anybody tried to interfere with that, then I think they should be held accountable to the full extent of the law. That being said, what we've seen with the indictments of Paul Manafort and Rick Gates were things that took place... 10 years prior to mm -hmm. their tenure, a short tenure, during the Trump campaign. The crimes that they've been accused of started back in 2006, 10 right. years before the Trump campaign was even up and running. Uh, but let me ask you this. Do you think the Russians did try to interfere in this election? Do you feel like that is a flat-out known fact in your mind? Well, I absolutely think they did, and I think they tried to do so through the Democratic Party. And if you look at the dossier, and if you look at what the Democratic National Committee has paid for, and what the Clinton campaign attorney has paid for, and what Podesta is now being accused of not knowing about, is that this dossier was put together with the help of a former MI6 spy who's in charge of the Russia desk. And now it even seems, Chuck, and I may be wrong, but it seems like the FBI was actually even paying this former MI6 person for information. And if that's the case, I'm very concerned. And that shows the Russians tried to influence the election through Hillary Clinton. Um, I know you're trying to twist this around there and you focus there. I'm talking about, though, everything we've learned. John Podesta's emails and the things that came out of there, the DNC hack. Do you acknowledge that the Russians were trying everything they could to defeat Hillary Clinton? No, I, Chuck, I don't think that's the case at all. If that was the case, why would the DNC and why would the Podesta team be paying this MI6 agent millions of dollars, like $9 million, to go and get Russia information to provide a false dossier so that they could go after Donald Trump? And, and look, it, granted, it came out after the election, but that was a direct payment. The only payment that we have seen so far to so this anybody conspiracy. directly tied to Russia Corey. was paid. No, no, Chuck, the, there has been never has been a payment from the Trump campaign or the RNC to anybody attempting to coordinate with Russia to get information. Right. That's only come from the Democrats. You ever heard of a, of a campaign getting opposition research and then deciding not to use it? I mean, you understand well, that for course. the conspiracy that you're putting together... You have to make the assumption that this was all the, this grand conspiracy that Hillary Clinton did to get caught and somehow lose the election. It, it just that part of it is is a head scratcher here to your no, story Chuck, as saying, to what you what you and the no, president no. are trying to paint here. Chuck, I'm just laying out the facts. The Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee paid multiples of millions of dollars to a former MI6 special agent Wait to a obtain that information is not an established from Russia. Fact. Corey, that is not an established well, fact. Look, it is a fact the, that the, the lawyer went to. It is a fact that the law that the attorney and the law firm that represented the Clinton campaign and the DNC paid some money. But you're you're creating a, a dollar figure here. That is not a provable fact yet. Well, it, look, if you're going to speak in facts, at least speak in facts. Chuck, let, let, let me give you the facts. What we know is the head Clinton attorney, the yeah. top guy, has now admitted that he had his own pot of money that he was responsible for and that he paid right. this MI6 agent. Now, that is a fact. He's admitted this publicly, that he has his own pot of money. And that pot of money right. came from the campaign. I've run a campaign. Never, ever, ever has a candidate that I know of given right. a unsolicited pot of money to a campaign attorney to do me, with it as you will with no accountability. Let me ask you this. You said something interesting today. You said... Um, why didn't the uh, if the FBI was investigating Paul Manafort, why didn't they give the campaign a heads up? Um, did you guys not read press clips? I mean, Paul Manafort's controversial past was well documented. Um, why didn't Team Trump vet him? 
Look, Chuck, I, I don't disagree with you. And I have said from day one, and look, people are going to say it's sour grapes. It's not sour grapes. Paul was the wrong guy to bring onto the campaign. His role was supposed to come in and be the delegate hunter to make sure that the delegates, the 1,237 delegates that Trump needed to secure the Republican nomination were in place. He held that job 40 years ago when Reagan mm -hmm. and Ford were fighting over delegates and hadn't been involved or relevant right. in the Republican Party politics since then. But he was brought in. He was recommended by a friend to the Trump campaign to come in and help with the delegates. When he came in, he was the one who started the leaks of the campaign, and right. he was a terrible hire. Let's not kid ourselves. He brought all these problems with him when he came to the Trump campaign. Are you but that convinced doesn't mean that, the that only Paul person, did anything while he was part of the Trump campaign. Are you convinced that the only person with ties to Russia on the Trump campaign is Paul Manafort? Oh, no, I didn't say that. Look, I, I think that Rick Gates, who's also been indicted, was also part of the Trump campaign. And those two came in together. They are, are thick they as it? thieves. Are they the and only those two? two have worked together. Are Look, they the only two? I don't two? know, Chuck. I can tell you this. I, I don't know, but I'll tell you this. What I know is as the campaign manager, to the best of my knowledge, I never spoke to a Russian. I never contacted a right. Russian. I never coordinated with a Russian. I don't know anything about Russia, okay? I never spoke to him. And I was the campaign manager. If there were other people who were on the periphery of the campaign, right. who were trying to communicate with Russia, that whether that was Roger Stone, who had no formal role, or Carter Page, who had no formal role, and they are bad people, I hope they're accountable to the fullest extent of the law. In the Washington Post interview that candidate Donald Trump did, where the first time he mentioned Carter Page as a foreign policy adv advisor, you were at that interview. George Papadopoulos was also on this list of security advisors. How did he get on there? Well, look, what was happening at the time was the press was clamoring to hear from the Trump team of who his advisors were going to be. And on that list, it was a hastily put together list. There was one meeting of the advisory committee, and that list included guys like Admiral Kubik and, and uh, General Matsuzaka and others. And so these names were added. How they got put together, I don't know exactly for sure, but I can tell you this. There was exactly one meeting, and to the best of my knowledge, Guys like Carter Page didn't even show up for the voluntary meeting that took place one time. And there was no formal structure, and they had no other role in the campaign. Well, there seemed to be... George Papadopoulos thought he had a formal structure. He reported to Sam Clovis. Is that fair? Well, look, no, it's not fair because let me say this. I don't speak for Sam Clovis. I speak for Corey Lewandowski, and as the campaign manager. George Papadopoulos had no formal role in the campaign. He was a volunteer. He was a low-level volunteer. And if he wanted to insert himself into the campaign with ideas and thoughts, right. he would have done that through the foreign policy team, which would have been Mr. Clovis's team. But he had no formal role whatsoever in the campaign structure. So how does a low-level guy end up in the same list as General Kellogg? Well, again, that's the real question that we have to look at is how did he end up in that initial list? What we know about George Papadopoulos was that he was originally hired by the Ben Carson campaign and he came highly recommended from a nonprofit organization in Washington, D.C., who vouched for his credibility to the Carson campaign. When, when Dr. Carson got out of the race, he joined our team. Now, how we got to our team from the right. Carson campaign, as you know, Chuck, there were people who right. from the Carson campaign joined the Trump campaign afterwards, and perhaps they brought him. I don't know for sure, but he was originally on the Carson campaign. Let me ask you this. If you can't say for sure how this George Papadopoulos got in here, isn't it, uh, is it that much of a leap to say, well, geez, Russians could have infiltrated this campaign because you didn't know where George Papadopoulos came from, and he somehow got into this campaign. Is it now possible? Do you look back at this and say, geez, maybe... Maybe the Russian government did infiltrate our campaign. Maybe it was a lot easier to do than I realized. Well, Chuck, but when you, when you say he was part of the campaign, to the best of my knowledge, George Papadopoulos never had a dot Donald Trump email address ever in his life. He was a volunteer like the tens of thousands of others who filtered uh, ideas up through he different people in the campaign. Onto the national, so he, he made it onto a list. Yeah, but he, but he, was a, he was a volunteer. He was a volunteer then why did he who, make it? Who, was, who was vouched for by, I think, by the who? Hudson Institute, a well-respected... I, 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 I believe he worked for the Hudson Institute, right? You're Look, making my Chuck, point here. I didn't you guys hire aren't every sure. Person. I understand that. But you guys are denying, well, there's no way any of these things can happen, and you don't know how supposedly a low-level volunteer ended up on the same advisory list as General Kellogg. But, but the advisory list consisted of exactly one meeting, which took place for about 30 minutes, and that was the end of the advisory committee. And the people who were uh, experts in the field of national security continued to give advice and counsel, like General Kellogg and Bert Matsuzaka, General Matsuzaka, and Admiral Kubik, and guys like George Papadopoulos, you know, that I know of, 
had no additional role in the campaign other than trying to provide information and pretend that they were relevant. He was a low-level volunteer who never had a Donald Trump email address, who was never paid by the campaign, who candidly probably never interacted with any of the senior management of the campaign. So I'm not sure how he ended up there, but I do know he started on the Carson campaign. I got to ask you this. How does a billionaire's campaign be so fast and loose with poor vetting, whether it's Paul Manafort, now George Papadopoulos. I mean, in fairness here, there's a pattern that your best defense is we were poor at doing this. That's not a good defense. No, Chuck, Chuck, there there wasn't, this is not like when you work for the federal government, right? You don't go through an SF-86 form and fill out your Office of Government Ethics forms to, to to apply to the campaign. What happens literally, and you know this, especially on a startup campaign is, People walk in the You're door. They say, look, I'd like Corey, to work for free. I've yeah. never seen Chuck, a billionaire we, we didn't business, run a billionaire's campaign. Billionaire Chuck, businessman. we didn't run a billionaire's campaign. I know you didn't. Chuck, but billionaire we spent businessmen, less money. They, don't, they usually Chuck, care about who's representing them. And they usually care a little Chuck, bit more Hillary than the Clinton, average person. Hillary Clinton had 800 people in her office in Brooklyn. And her top, her top attorney, who is a well-known operative, was paying a Russian, a, a former MI6 spy, to provide information on Russia, and her chairman of her committee had to step away from his Democrat, from his firm today because of his ties to this. Let's talk about that. Those are you're conflating. Hang on, Corey. You are are conflating the people. You are conflating the Podesta brothers, but but uh, I think you're conflating Tony and John. I understand what you're trying to do. I I get. I see what you're doing there. Final question. It seems that a lot of people connected to the Trump campaign. We're either trying to get Clinton emails or were offered the opportunity to get Clinton emails. Let me ask you this. Did you ever pursue missing Clinton emails on your own or were you ever offered Clinton's emails in some form by any sort of outside group? Look, I, I never pursued them on my own. I can speak to that unequivocally. And if anybody would have brought that to my attention and said, we think we can get Clinton's emails, I would have brought that directly to the campaign council and said, this sounds like a legal issue that I shouldn't be involved with. You guys make a legal determination. So to the best of my knowledge, I know this unequivocally. I never pursued them and nobody ever brought them to me that I would have been aware of because I would have brought it right to council for their recommendation, their legal input. All right. I think that is a good place to end here. Corey Lewandowski served as Trump campaign manager just before Paul Manafort and is currently an advisor to the Trump super PAC. Corey, good to see you. Good morning to you. Good morning. Happy Halloween. And to you, how well do you know George Papadopoulos? You know, from what I recall, George was a low-level volunteer who might have attended uh, a meeting of the foreign policy advisory team, the one meeting that took place. Uh, but he was not a person who was involved with the day-to-day operations of the campaign or a person who I recall interacting with uh, on a regular basis at all. Corey, were you aware or was anyone in the White House aware that he had actually been arrested as part of this investigation back in July? Have you had any interaction or has anyone in the inner circle had interaction with him in the time since July? You know, I can't speak for the people in the White House of what they may or may not be aware of, but I can say unequivocally on behalf of myself, uh, I've had no interaction with George uh, from that uh, time where he was arrested or or since I left the campaign that I can recall in June of 2016 and uh, have not had any interaction. And I was not aware of his arrest other than what was reported yesterday. Knowing that he was arrested and is now cooperating with the special counsel, If he was in contact with anyone in the inner circle through phone calls or emails or visits to the White House, do you imagine there are some people in the White House this morning waking up with dry mouths? Well, look, I I can say this. You know, I know a number of the people in the White House. I had the privilege of working with them on the campaign. And George was never a person who was part of the team that was interacting with the uh, senior management on a regular basis. And look, if George did in fact lie to the FBI and he's been arrested for those lies, then he should be accountable for that, which anybody should be. Cool. So I don't think there's any concern in the White House about his uh, any potential contact that he may or may not have had. Corey, let's see if we can clear up a few things from the indictment, which I'm sure you have read. Are you the, quote, high-ranking campaign official who received three or four emails from George Papadopoulos during this April, May, June time period during the campaign? You know, it's a great question, Savannah, and I don't know the answer to it 
because, as you know, as the campaign manager to the Trump campaign, I was receiving thousands of emails a day. I don't know if that's uh, if that was re specifically referring to me or was that Paul Manafort or was that Rick Gates or somebody else? So you don't you recognize know, don't those like emails. Some of the emails have quotes. For example, one of the emails states that the campaign official, which may or may not be you, forwarded an email and said, you're running point on this. Did you send an email like that? Yeah, Savannah, look, I, I don't recall that specific email, but you're asking me to remember an email from April of 2016 on a day that I, at any given day, would have received a thousand emails, and this would have potentially come from a low-level volunteer. So I don't remember the exact email. So I don't know if I'm that person or cool. not, and I can't I can't speak to who who is that who is named in that particular incident. At any time, Corey, did George Papadopoulos tell you either verbally or in an email? that Russian officials had told him that they had dirt on Hillary Clinton, specifically thousands of her emails. Do you ever receive, remember receiving that message from George Papadopoulos? I, I don't remember that. And the reason would be is because George was such a low-level volunteer. I don't recall having much interaction with him throughout the campaign. He would have uh, potentially been talking to somebody else in the campaign. But as the campaign manager, particularly at that time when we were in the middle of an intense primary fight, with Ted Cruz and John Kasich, you know, my day-to-day -day operation was not interacting with a low-level volunteer. Well, let me just see if we can clarify this. Were you aware that the Russians had hacked the DNC computers and emails before the news broke? Did you get that information from someone before April of that year? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, the abs absolutely not. When I found out about that, I found out about it through public press reports. Corey, has the FBI asked to interview you? Have you been interviewed by the FBI? No, look, I, I, let me be very clear. I'll be more than happy to cooperate with any potential ongoing investigation. I have not spoken to anybody from the FBI, but I will be as clear as I can be. I will cooperate with any investigation because I am 100% certain that all of my interactions at the campaign were above board and legal, and I have nothing to hide. So if they ask me to participate, I'll be happy to do that unequivocally. All right, Corey Lewandowski, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you, Corey. your time.